In this tribute video, we honor the American legends who have passed away today and in recent days. Welcome back to Movie Newscast. These remarkable individuals made lasting contributions to their fields, and we sadly say goodbye to them. Our heartfelt condolences go out to their families and fans. As we remember their legacies, we invite you to show your support by giving this video a thumbs up if their lives or work have touched you in any way. Your gesture is a sign of respect and remembrance. Firstly, Maggie Smith, a legendary actress who worked professionally for more than 70 years, has died, according to a statement from her family. Her sons, Toby Stevens and Chris Larkin, released a statement saying Smith passed away peacefully in the hospital early Friday morning. They did not give a cause of death. Smith's family thanks the staff at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital for their care and support during their mother's final days and asked for privacy during this trying time. Maggie began her professional acting career in the early 1950s, making numerous stage appearances at some of the largest venues in England. She transitioned to film acting, receiving much praise for her role as Desdemona on stage and on screen alongside Laurence Olivier in Othello. She received her first Academy Award nomination for it, though she wouldn't win her first Oscar until the prime of Miss Jen Brody four years later. In total, Smith received six Oscar nominations during her lifetime, winning one other in 1978 for her role in California Suite. Younger fans will recognize her more for her 2000s roles, appearing in seven of the eight Harry Potter films as Potter's teacher, Professor Minerva McGonagall. She then took on the dramatic role of Violet Crawley, matriarch of the main family in Downton Abbey, delighting fans in the period piece for all six seasons and two movies. For that role, she won three Primetime Emmys, three SAG Awards, and a Golden Globe, Smith dealt with her own health issues over the years, announcing she had cancer in 2007. However, by 2009, she had made a full recovery and was cancer-free. Maggie is survived by her two sons and five grandchildren. She was 89. Rest in peace. Barbara Lee Hunt dead at 88 known for Alfred Hitchcock's Frenzy. Barbara Lee Hunt a legendary actress of the stage and screen, has died, her family has confirmed. The British star, who was best known for appearing in Alfred Hitchcock's 1972 thriller, Frenzy, died peacefully in her home in Warwickshire, England on Monday, September 16. She leaves behind a seven-decade-long acting legacy, which includes one of Hitchcock's most controversial movie scenes. In Frenzy, Lee Hunt portrayed Brenda Blaney, the wife of main character Richard Blaney, played by John Finch. Her character was infamously sexually assaulted and murdered by a serial killer on the loose, sparking controversy at the time. Fans may also recognize Lee Hunt from the BBC's 1995 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, which starred Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy. Lee Hunt played Firth's aunt in the film, the snobby lady Catherine de Borg. Other notable film credits include Henry V.I. and His Six Wives, Bequest to the Nation, Billy Elliot, and Vanity Fair. Her husband of 47 years, Richard Pascoe, predeceased her, dying at the age of 88 in 2014. Leigh Hunt was also 88 years old at the time of her passing. Rest in peace. Chino XL family reveals rapper died of suicide. Chino XL's family has broken their silence around his sudden death in July, revealing the veteran rapper died of suicide. His family is hoping to turn the tragedy into a healing and preventable moment for anyone battling mental illness and released a statement Friday. The statement reads, with the most profound sadness imaginable, we share the news that our beloved father decided to end his own life. It's been the most painful and personal experience of our lives, but in honor of Suicide Awareness Month, we decided to share this truth. Dad would hope that this news may help someone else stay alive. Barbosa battled lifelong depression and, in 2020, was diagnosed with congenital heart failure. 
In the collective words of his daughters, our father was our rock and our best friend. Papa Bear loved us and taught us so much. Hundreds of emails, texts, chats, and beautiful posts and comments on social media have shown us that dad was a fountain of strength to so many. He encouraged and comforted pretty much everyone in his path and left this dimension with an untouchable creative legacy. We are grateful beyond words for our time with dad and are overwhelmed by the immeasurable global outpouring of love from around the world. We will forever navigate this catastrophic loss and ask for continued privacy. The hip-hop community was in shambles at the time of Chino's death, and fans are now highly anticipating his upcoming posthumous album scheduled for an October release. Chino was 50 years old. Rest in peace. Young Dolph Justin Johnson guilty of murder, sentenced to life. Memphis jurors took several hours to reach a verdict Thursday, ultimately delivering a guilty verdict to Justin Johnson. One of the men prosecutors claimed murdered young Dolph back in 2021. The jury returned unanimous guilty verdicts to the charges of first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, and being a convicted felon in possession of a firearm. And Judge Jennifer Mitchell immediately threw the book at him with a life sentence. Closing arguments were delivered Wednesday. Johnson never took the stand, but Cornelius Smith testified during the trial Yogati's slain brother Big Jook and suspect Hernandez Govan orchestrated for them to kill any paper route empire rappers they could find. Smith said the pair happened to spot Dolph on the day of November 17, 2021, and opened fire outside the Makita's cookie shop while the rapper was getting treats for his mother. Prosecutors argued the plan was for Govan to eventually broker a deal for Johnson to secure a record deal with Gotti's CMG records for his deadly deed. Smith said he wound up only getting paid $800, and he and Johnson fled before being arrested in January 2022. Young Dolph's friends and family, spearheaded by his children's mother, Nia J, have kept his legacy thriving through various music releases and community service days, all while advocating for his justice. And now, they finally got it. Viking Lord Vince Austin, one of the veterans of the Alberta wrestling scene with roots in Atlantic Canada, has died. He was 52. One of the province's promotions, Real Canadian Wrestling, posted the news to Facebook. It's with great sadness that R.C. Gabu has announced the unfortunate news that Vince Austin has passed away. R.C. Gabu sends its deepest heart felt condolences to the his family, friends and fans, as this is truly a great loss to the entire wrestling scene. R.C. Gabu will provide more details once they become available. SlamWrestling.net profiled Austin, real name Gordon Glynn, in September 2021, in the feature Viking Lord Vince Austin Stays True to His Values. The veteran started out in the early 1990s in his native Newfoundland and Labrador, and went through a series of names through his career, including Blue Hand Terry's, Gordon Glynn, Mr. Wrestling No. 666, Stephen White, and Vince Austin which is the name he has used the longest. He was such a great guy and was in a walking and an encyclopedia of Canadian and specifically maritime wrestling and had such a great sense of humor and lit up every dressing room he was ever in, said Alberta promoter Spencer Tapley. Though Austin hadn't wrestled or managed much in the last few months, it is apparent that he meant a lot to people in the wrestling business. Rest in peace, Richard Mayhew, abstract artist who painted hazy visions of the world around us, dies at 100. Richard Mayhew, who was known for his hazy abstract paintings that at times resembled landscapes, died on Thursday at the age of 100. The news was confirmed by ACA Galleries in New York, which had previously shown the artist. Throughout his life, Mayhew was often identified as a landscape painter, but he eschewed that title correcting people by telling them that he was, in fact, a mindscape painter. Because when I go to a canvas, I just put paint on there and it's suggestive, it's very suggestive. 
He explained in a 2019 oral history as part of the Getty Research Institute's African American Art History Initiative. Since I'm involved with the feeling of desire, ambition, love, hate, fear, that's my paintings. It takes on that kind of structure and imagery. James B. Sicking, the prolific, Emmy-nominated actor known for his roles on Hill Street Blues and Doogie Howser, M.D., died July 13 of dementia. He was 90. Sicking died at his Los Angeles home, where his publicist Cynthia Snyder tells Deadline that the actor was surrounded by family in his final moments. In a remarkable career, Sicking's wonderfully exciting face gave us drama, comedy, tragedy, and hilarious farce. His career spanned over six decades in television, film, and on stage, said Snyder in a statement, adding, his talent, integrity, and imagination intrigued and delighted audiences. Sicking earned an Emmy nom in 1984 for playing the gung-ho SWAT leader Lieutenant Howard Hunter on Hill Street Blues during the show's full 1981-87 run and co-starred as the title character's father, Dr. David Hauser, on Doogie Hauser, M.D., from 1989-93. to He also was a regular on Brooklyn South in 1997-98, to appear on such shows as Rawhide, Bonanza, Starsky and Hutch, The Rockford Files, Turnabout, General Hospital, and Curb Your Enthusiasm. He studied theater at UCLA, where he met wife Lauren Kaplan, while also serving in the military. Sicking is survived by wife Florine, son Andrew, daughter Dr. Emily Sicking, and four grandchildren. Joe Wolf, former NBA basketball star and coach, dead at 59, he will be missed. Wolf was once voted the greatest high school basketball player in Wisconsin state history. Former standout college basketball star Joe Wolf, who played 11 seasons in the NBA before becoming a coach, has died. He was 59. Wolf's death was announced on Thursday, September 26 by the Milwaukee Bucks organization, where he was currently a coach for the NBA team's G League affiliate, the Wisconsin Herd. The Milwaukee Bucks and Wisconsin Herd are deeply saddened by the unexpected passing of Herd assistant coach and Kohler native Joe Wolf, the organization said in a statement. Throughout his life, Joe touched many lives and was a highly respected, adored, and dedicated coach and player across the NBA. His well-regarded talent was instrumental for the Bucks and Herd over eight years with the organization, including as a player and coach. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reported that Wolf died of a heart attack. The newspaper once voted in 2005 that Wolf, a Kohler Wiss, native was the greatest high school basketball player in the state's history. During his time at Kohler High School, Wolf helped lead his school to three state championships in 1980, 1982, and again in 1983. Whitney Ridbeck dies. Friday the 13th actor died of complications from prostate cancer. Best known for his role in Friday the 13th Part IV, Jason Lives, Whitney Ridbeck has died after a battle with prostate cancer. The actor's longtime friend, Tommy McLaughlin, shared the news with The Hollywood Reporter. Whitney, who appeared in over 50 shows and movies, died at the age of 79 while in hospice care in Chatsworth, California in Monday. Whitney died from complications with prostate cancer. Tommy posted a tribute to his friend on Instagram, calling Whitney one of the most good-hearted human beings I've ever known. His caption read, We lost not only a truly funny comedian and actor, but one of the most good-hearted human beings I've ever known. He brought a lot to Jason Lives his comedic act, his panic, his naiveness, his lack of paintball skills. But a generation based on only a few minutes airtime remember this guy when going paintballing. A sad loss indeed, he ended with a heart emoji. In the horror film, Whitney played Roy who fired shots from a paintball at notorious hockey mask-wearing killer Jason Vordes. Others noted that he did so much with such a limited role in the Friday the 13th film. Whitney has had various guest appearances on shows like The Brady Bunch, Scrubs, and Star Trek, 
The Next Generation. Other films he's appeared in include Rocky Ew, Oliver and Company, Sleeper, and 1941. His most recent film was in 2005, entitled Angels with Angles, where he played Jack Benny. In the 1980s, he appeared in a series of humorous PSAs that promoted wearing seatbelts. The safety campaign was titled You Could Learn a Lot from a Dummy and Whitney played one half of Crash Test Dummy Duo Larry and Vince. French Connection actor Tommy Lobianco dies at 87. Tommy Lobianco, an actor whose film roles included villains in The French Connection and The Honeymoon Killers, and whose stage career earned him stellar reviews for an Arthur Miller tragedy and an Obie Award for a baseball drama died on June 11 at his home in Poolsville, Maryland. He was 87. The cause was prostate cancer, his wife, Elise Lobianco, said. Lobianco made a vivid impression in The Honeymoon Killers, 1970, a low-budget black-and-white film based on a true story that came to be regarded as a cult classic. With a heavy Spanish accent and serious sideburns, he played Raymond Fernandez, a con man who courted, married, and murdered lonely women for their bank accounts, passing off his real lover, Shirley Stoller, as his sister. British newspaper The Guardian called the film movie's first super-realist depiction of the banality of evil. A United Press International writer once labeled Lo Bianco a natural-born heavy because of his dark hair, bushy eyebrows, and sharp features. In The French Connection, 1971, moviegoers saw him as the owner of a modest Brooklyn diner, Sal and Angie's, dressed to the nines and driving a Lincoln with European plates, courtesy of international drug money. In The Seven Ups, 1973, he was a mortician at one of the Mafia's favorite funeral homes. He married Elise Best Muldoon, a writer, in 2015. They had homes in Poolsville and on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. In addition to his wife, he is survived by two daughters from his first marriage, Yummy Helms and Mena Landy, a brother John, two stepchildren, Tristan Hamilton and Lana Fitzgerald, six grandchildren and four step-grandchildren. Another daughter from his first marriage, Anna Avila, died of breast cancer in 2006. Former child star Benji Gregory's cause of death has been ruled an accident two months after he was found dead in his car in Peoria, Arez. The Maricopa Medical Examiner's Office shared Gregory suffered from environmental heat exposure in the setting of hepatic cirrhosis, which means that his liver had formed scar tissue, fibrosis. The National Library of Medicine states that following a chronic injury, most of the liver tissue becomes fibrotic, leading to loss of function and the development of cirrhosis. Gregory, who became a household name when he portrayed Brian Tanner on all four seasons of ALF from 1986 to 1990, was found dead in a Chase Bank parking lot in June. He was 46. The medical examiner's report obtained by Page Six, confirmed he died on June 13. In July, his sister Rebecca Faffinger confirmed his death on Facebook, saying she and their family believed Gregory was at the bank the evening of the 12th to deposit some residuals and never got out the car to do so. He fell asleep and died from vehicular heat stroke, she wrote. Ben was a great son, brother and uncle. He was fun to be around and made us laugh quite often. Still, going through his things, I find myself laughing at little videos or notes of his, in between crying. His sister went on to reveal that Gregory also suffered from depression, bipolar disorder, and had a sleep disorder that would typically force him to stay awake for days. Bill Cobbs, veteran actor known for roles in Demolition Man and Airbud, dead at 90. Bill Cobbs, a veteran Hollywood actor known for roles in Demolition Man, That Thing You Do, and Air Bud, among many others, has died, according to a family member. He was 90. The news was confirmed by Cobbs' brother Thomas Cobbs, who wrote on Facebook that the actor died on Tuesday, peacefully at his home in California. A beloved partner, 
big brother, uncle, surrogate parent, godfather and friend, Bill recently and happily celebrated his 90th birthday, surrounded by cherished loved ones, the post continued. CNN has reached out to Cobb's representatives for further comment. With a career spanning five decades, Cobb's had nearly 200 film and TV credits and appeared in many beloved titles, including the 1993 action thriller Demolition Man and the Oscar-nominated 1996 classic That Thing You Do. The Cleveland native's career began in the mid-1970s when he got his start on the stage, appearing in Broadway productions including Black Picture Show and The First Breeze of Summer. He also later appeared in stage productions for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Throughout the 70s and into the 80s, Cobb's career took off. He appeared in various TV shows and TV movies including Good Times, The Equalizer, One Life to Live, and Sesame Street. Cobb's passion for acting never waned throughout his decades-long career. I enjoy what I do, I really enjoy it, he said in a 2012 interview. It's exciting to have a project and work on it and see it come to fruition, so I can find joy doing this so much. Dave Coulier is opening up about how he and his fellow Full House co-stars work hard to keep the late Bob Saget's legacy alive. We talk about all the fun times we had, Coulier, 65, exclusively told us weekly while attending 90s Con in Daytona Beach, Florida earlier this month. You can either look at it as an empty well, or you can keep filling that well up with great memories. And we have millions of memories that we can keep filling the well up with. And that's what we do. So, he added, we keep him alive in our spirits and our hearts every day. Sajid died at the age of 65 in January 2022, after being found unresponsive in his Orlando, Florida, hotel room. At the time, his family shared a statement that confirmed authorities determined Sagitt experienced head trauma after an accidental fall. Less than one week after his death, Sagitt was mourned during a private funeral, which was attended by his former Full House co-stars, including Collier, John Stamos, Candace Cameron Bure, and Jody Sweeten. Sagitt starred alongside the group on the beloved sitcom as Father Danny Tanner for six seasons from 1987 to 1995. He later reprised the role for a guest role on the Netflix revival Fuller House, which starred Cameron Bure, Sweeten, and Andrea Barber, who played D.G. Tanner, Stephanie Tanner, and Kimmy Gibbler, respectively. Coulier, who also returned as Uncle Joey for the sequel series, has been open about mourning Sagitt since his death nearly three years ago. During an appearance on Tamron Hall in May 2022, Coulier shared that sobriety played a large role in his grieving process. I definitely went through the sorrow hat trick, so to speak, he shared at the time. My brother took his own life and he was actually the funniest person I've ever known. My brother Dan, I was the one who found him at my dad's house down in the basement. A part of me died that day as well, because I really loved my brother. He added, I made jokes to my friends and family, and the line was, boy, I sure picked the wrong time in my life to stop drinking. And people would laugh at that knowing I was sober. And then my father passed away a couple of months ago, and I got to say all of the things that a son could say to his father about how proud I was. In April, Coulier invited Sajid's widow, Kelly Rizzo, on for an episode of his Full House Rewind podcast, where the duo bonded over their time with the former America's Funniest Home Videos host. Coulier also shared a touching voice message for listeners that Sajid had sent him after the death of his brother, Danny Coulier. I know it's not a time to call, but I'm right here 24 7 right now, right here, Sajid told his longtime friend on the phone. I love you Dave, and I'm so sorry Dave, I loved him, I'm so sorry, so I'm here, I'm here 24 7 just call me anytime. Doesn't have to be now, it can be a week, whenever, I could just talk to you and listen, I love you so much. Coulier told Rizzo, 45, who tied the knot with Sagt in 2018, that it was an audio hug from his longtime friend. 
I love Bob and he loved me too, he said. I'd like to close this episode by playing that voicemail message that Bob left for me. Maybe someday you can pass along the same kind of compassion for someone you love.